what are basically the questions, the scientific questions you want to answer in your life? Yeah. The most interesting questions for you. Well, I've, I've definitely solved the problem about the fluids and exercise. So that's mm -hmm. kind of, I've laid that it's to rest. Done. That's. Therefore, you wrote the book. Yeah, about. so that, that was 31 years and, yeah. and the book's written. Yeah. And in fact, the book is only half of what I actually wrote. There was another half that had to be left I out. I'm astonished how you can write such big books. <laughs> That's right. So amazing. I know, me too. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the next one then is oh. going to be the, the next one is going to be the, the central governor. Yeah. I will eventually write a book about the central governor and, and bring it right up to date and make it practical and so that for future generations they'll know what was the traditional ideas and uh, what are the new ideas. But now I've definitely got involved in nutrition and I think mm -hmm. from the last two years I've learned that 80 to 90 percent of all illnesses are nutritionally based and if you had told me that two years ago I said but you, that you're mad, you're lunatic to suggest that and I know, it's not, I know that that's not the case yeah. and, and so what I've learned is that our nutrition is so bad that it helps not to compare this person who doesn't have a disease yeah, to that person who exactly. has a disease. Because the nutrition is so bad anyway. You have to look at the populations who were traditional populations eating their traditional diets. And they didn't have all these diseases that we have. They just weren't described. And you have, in this is South Africa, which gives you different possibility to look at these traditional ways, like Bushmen yeah, or yeah, other tribes exactly. who have still got their... Yeah. Well, you're quite right. We don't have too many of those populations around. But, but, but the converse is we have seen the, the change from the traditional diet to the urban diet mm -hmm. in the last 60 or 70 years, and the effects have been catastrophic. So you can see the consequences of that dietary change. They're, they're around us all the time. And how are you working hypothesis in yeah. nutrition? Because it's a very... Yeah. I mean, so oh, where's the frame of reference? Yeah. It's so difficult. It's very simple. Yeah. It's very simple. The first, this, it, this, the first question is, why do not all creatures on the earth eat the same food? That's the, the question. Or you could conversely say, why do all mammals on earth not eat the same food? And for example, a lion or a giraffe. A giraffe has the same bodily structure as myself. I mean, no, sorry, it has the same basic organs. But it eats a totally different food. It just eats acacia plants. How can it survive on acacia plants, the leaves, when we have to eat all this other food? And the answer is you co evolve with the food. Uh -huh. And that's the key. And so if you want to know what you should feed your dog or your cat or the lion or the, or the koala bear or the leopard, you just see what does it co evolve with. And then you know. And so then you have to look back to yourself. So my family are from the north of England. 15,000 years ago, England was like Greenland. They weren't growing vegetables and rice and cereals. We were eating mammoths and woolly mm -hmm. musk oxen. That's what we were eating, high fat, high protein. Mm -hmm. So I have to think that my genes make me much more likely to su succeed mm -hmm. on a diet that's very high in fat mm -hmm. and very high in protein and relatively spared in, in, in carbohydrates. And, so, and, and it turns out that the majority of humans are like that. I'm sure in Asia you can probably get away with a bit more, a bit more carbohydrate, a bit more cereals and grains. But, yeah, but that's that's a recent adaptation. For the rest of us, you don't want to have too much carbohydrate. Timelines. Yeah. Because I think we always look at too short yeah, exactly. timelines. Yeah. What is your time span you are looking at when you're talking about centuries, decades, yeah. yeah. hundred thousand years? Because yeah. human. Creature core walks, yeah. this is yeah. Yeah. Really, really yeah. opinion, but it's slow. It's yeah. Slow. Yeah. Well, well, as as the one group said that, he said, I don't care if tomorrow a paper comes out in the New England Journal of Medicine saying that eating fat is bad for you. He said because that is an experiment that went for six months. The human is 2.5 million years we've had this experiment going on. And that's the answer. Yeah. So that the that is the perfect yeah. experiment. Yeah. And if you understand that experiment, then then you know what the results are. So the so the basic problem in nutrition uh, is that there's not a cohesive philosophy or accepted hypothesis. In every other discipline, in medicine, we accept Darwinism, 
and that then gives us the basis for everything we do, and including genetics. Mm -hmm. And in geology, it's the intercontinental shift, drift, which is accepted by everyone. Mm -hmm. They don't debate yeah, that. Something. And it, the, the base of geology is that. And in, in nutrition, it has to be that, you, we, that all creatures co-evolve in the environment with the food that they're currently eating. But yeah. this is so engraved into our view that nature got externalized. Yeah. There's the human creature, there is nature, yeah, exactly. and we forgot about yeah, being part. Yeah. And this is especially Western yeah. rational tradition. I exactly. think it makes it, uh, and it makes it very difficult to uh, open the minds mm -hmm. because I think I will, <laughs> I think nutrition is as you were talking about thirst. Mm -hmm. The same I think applies to appetite. But if we are completely messed up creatures, yeah. dysregulated, yeah. I mean, uh, if we look that's at the a, appetite a, regulation, how complex this is. A, so this is a very, very interesting topic yeah. and I would love, what are your first, uh, how is your experimental setup to tackle <laughs> this? So, so you, you're absolutely correct. So the, the basis, so, so if I go to the game parks in South Africa, and look at the animals there. I don't see any fat animals. Exactly. I also do not see any dietitians, <laughs> nor do I see any exercise physiologists. So, how do they get it right? <laughs> and the answer is, when a lion kills an enormous buffalo, it eats it. It doesn't need to be told, okay, you mustn't eat for another three weeks or three days or whatever. Three days later, it awakes from its slumber and it discovers the stomach's a little bit empty mm -hmm. And it says, gee, it's time to go and hunt again. And then it'll, whatever it catches, it catches. Mm -hmm. And if it's a small, small antelope, it'll eat the next day. And so its appetite is perfectly regulated. And what's happened in humans is that our appetite has been hijacked by addictive foods. That's the key. How do you call it? Addictive foods. Ah, addictive and the, foods, yeah. So the food industry produces addictive foods that are... You just that you can't avoid them, you have mm -hmm. to eat them. And so what I see appetite today is an addiction. It's got nothing to do with biology. Mm -hmm. And only by removing all these processed mm -hmm. foods, highly addictive mm -hmm. processed foods, mm -hmm. do you finally learn what hunger really mm -hmm. is. And hunger is something that sort of is a very gentle sensation which comes along every mm -hmm. 12 to 24 hours. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just like that. Disappear. Exactly. It's not this, I must get food, uh -huh. like I must get alcohol or I must uh -huh. get cigarettes. Uh -huh. It's totally different. So that's an addiction. And the whole industry of, since 1970 has been driving us to eat addictive foods. And that's the cause of obesity. Mm -hmm. So it's very simple. It's very simple. It, and, yeah. But to correct it, you have to change the whole industry. And, and that's... It, you know what? It needs a war. Yeah, precisely. How do you start out? Well, well, it's really interesting because, because, and I'm not drawing attention to myself, but, but I do have a profile in South Africa, and ever since I started talking like this, it's become a national talking point. What should be your diet? And the concept, I've given people the freedom to eat more fat. And that's, that's the key breakthrough. Mm -hmm because people took out the fat and replaced it with carbohydrate and on the basis that the fat's dangerous. Mm -hmm. And now people are questioning that and they're suddenly starting to eat fat again. And then they're finding they're actually more healthy. Mm -hmm. They lose the cravings mm -hmm. and they lose weight mm -hmm. and they feel better. And it's really interesting because every single person you convert converts another 10 or 20 people. Viral. It's a completely viral. And that's what's happening in South Africa at the moment.